Okay, batting cleanup is the uh, the always uh, exciting and provocative Charlie Grimes, who many of you know. Charlie is the chair of the Prince William Conservation Alliance. He spent over 30 years with the Department of the Interior, working as a National Park Service Ranger in Missouri, manager of scenic easements on the Rogue, Wild, and Scenic River in Oregon, followed by 25 years in headquarters jobs that got progressively duller. He actually, <laughs> he presumably wrote that. So he began to teach Virginia geography classes at George Mason, Mason University, which he still does part-time. He is the author of the Virginia Places website and also lectures to delegations from the Chinese government interested in the American system. Charlie. When I first heard the county was doing a real rural preservation study, my response was, why? My concern was I dealt with the planning department in the past. Before Chris got here, my engagement with the planning de department on the last comprehensive plan was not a positive one. I was not impressed by the professionalism of the organization. Staff that are still there referred to the rural area as unzoned rather than acknowledging its status. And so my concerns were that there was something amiss in the idea that we're doing a rural preservation study. So the obvious question is, before you adopt a solution, let's define the problem. What's broke with the rural area? Well, one thing that's broke with the rural area is that we're not doing a successful enough job conserving air commercial agriculture. We have not set it up so that you can make a good living in agriculture for the next 30 years. And we need to address that challenge so that if you want to maintain a farm, either full-time or part-time, you can do so using our rural area. We have great market opportunities with the focus on local food. We have the high-end restaurants in the D.C. area. We have something to offer that is wonderfully available. It is space to grow crops for high-end restaurant food in our rural area. We also have the opportunity for some of the traditional agriculture that requires large spaces and large bases of equipment. So we ought to address the challenge, how do we conserve and preserve our rural area for farming purposes? The most cost-effective way to maintain open space is to farm it. So let's find a way to do that. Another problem we face with our rural area is that we keep threatening the traditional uses by proposing new roads. The Bi-County Parkway is one example that threatened to seize private property and convert it to another use, a public road, and was going to result in spin-off development associated with that road. There are other proposals that are in our current comp plan to four-lane Vent Hill Road. If we four-lane Vent Hill Road, they're going to take private land in order to make it a four-lane road, and we're going to take that piece from 28 over to Gainesville and turn it into a commuter route. We're going to take that piece from the Falkir border to Gainesville and turn it into in, uh, 29 and turn it into another commuter route. So we are threatening the traditional uses in our rural area with proposals for new roads, which don't come free, incidentally. We spent about a billion dollars to expand Interstate 66 and build the interchange complex in Gainesville. So all of us who live out there, and I live in the rural area, we basically live in government-subsidized housing. Thank you for the road money. One of the challenges that we face in proposals for development of the rural area is that we see language that says conservation development. Now, that's a wonderful contradiction in terms sometimes, and sometimes it mat matches reality. When we see proposals to put in our cluster development in the rural area, and we see an example cited south of Haymark Haymarket, or the uh, Leopold's Preserve at the villages of Piedmont, you will see that referred to as cluster development. It isn't. The area that was in the rural area is the preserved area. The area that was in the development area formerly industrial commercial use land, was rezoned for housing. But we didn't save any property through that particular project. And theoretically, there's conservation easement associated with the wetlands in that area, but nobody's seen the terms of the conservation easement. All we know from the proffer is that if you are a stormwater pond with a chain link fence and the sign that says keep out water rises rapidly, that counts as a natural area. So my concerns go up when somebody refers to that as conservation development. We know some things aren't broke. I own land in the rural area. All of us who own land in the rural area have development potential on our land. And we've known for 15 years what that development potential is. 
Now, I could sell my land for a waste dump and make more money, but that's not the appropriate use of my property. We're all affected by zoning. We're all limited in our ability to use our land by zoning. And there are no surprises. For 15 years, we've known what the zoning is. We can all build houses with alternative on-site septic systems. Not cheap, but my neighbor's got one. That's what you do when you want to build a house in a rural area. Those 10 acre lots that we're building on are not the ideal way to conserve agricultural area, but they turn out to produce high-end executive homes that make a profit for Prince William County. We are not building those homes that generate more social cost than they do taxes. In those 10 acre lots, as originally proposed when Sean Connaughton asked for development and executive homes to occur in the western end of Prince William County, we're building the homes that pay their way in order to provide services. We don't have a shortage of building in Prince William County. We don't have a shortage of building places. We do a build out analysis every year. In Prince William County, we have 141,000 dwelling units today. We are zoned for 38,000 more. That's 27% more. That's 20 years of growth. We have already zoned, with our existing zoning, the growth potential for the next 20 years of people coming to Prince William County. That's appropriate development, where it's zoned for development. For commercial activity, we've already zoned 120% beyond what we have today. We've zoned for two Tyson's Corners to be in Prince William County. Let me know if we get a Tyson's Corner in Prince William County. The Gainesville Sector Plan is zoned for a lot of that growth. The challenge is not to zone more land for development, but to attract development to the land that we've already set aside for that purpose. Now, I'm not quite sure what smart growth is in your minds, but let me suggest what dumb growth is in your mind. Dumb growth is when the jobs are north of Bull Run and east of Route 28, and we build more houses far away. Because that simply requires us to put cars on the road to commute people to those jobs. If you like traffic congestion, build more cars and build more houses in Falk here. Build more houses far away from the jobs. If you don't like traffic congestion, let's build jobs and houses together. Where are we going to have those houses? Where are we going to have those jobs? That's what we have zoning for. Our opportunity in Prince William County is pretty broad for where we can build that. We have the opportunity to build along the VRE route and along Route 95, along Route 1. We just spent $11 million to bury the power lines, so we'd make it an attractive place for development. North Woodbridge has been proposed for years for new economic activity. We have VRE station at Ripon that offers an opportunity. And if you happen to like the Manassas line, go over to the Manassas Park site and look at that space, just waiting for economic activity to grow at the VRE station. Why is it not growing yet? Because VRE is a commuter rail. Goes in in the morning, comes out at night. Let's expand the capacity of VRE so it is a transit system, so that it goes back and forth all day long. And at that point, we get the jobs out here. When we get the jobs out here, we don't have to commute over there. So the best opportunity for economic development for us in Prince William County is to take advantage of the infrastructure we've already built, not to plant houses further away and then have to build more roads at a distance. Uh, that's not the way we're going to save on taxes. That's going to cost us a lot of money. The danger of the rural preservation study, the concern I had, is that it ignored all the development in Stafford, Carolina, Spotsylvania County. If you want a quarter acre lot with a white picket fence, that space is available. They're putting in a 2,900 house subdivision, George Washington Village in Stafford County. They're putting in a whole bunch of those facilities in Spotsylvania and Carolina, where we are building the infrastructure on Route 95 with hot lanes, with VRE extensions to Spotsylvania County, with Amtrak extensions, we are offering the capacity to move people back and forth along the Route 95 corridor. It would make sense for us to build our housing there. We've got three acre lots all over the place in Spotsylvania County and all over the place in Stafford County. It's a smart place for us to grow where the infrastructure is in place. The concern I have, and I hope you do a better job than your predecessors have done, Chris, the concern I have is the rural preservation study is a camel's nose in the tent. And there's an ugly back half to that camel. And so what I'm looking for is a rural preservation study that defines the problem it's going to fix. The problem is too much traffic, too much threat to traditional development, not enough support for agriculture. And if the proposals in the rural preservation study 
enable us to address those problems, it's a good step. If it simply says cluster development is good, let's grow with greater density, I'll go with the Nancy Reagan solution for that. Just say no. 